Hello and welcome back. If you've been following this series, then you'll know for the last few lectures, we've been looking at how to work with data that is stored in Excel. In lecture seven and lecture 16, we talked about how to interact with an Excel uh, spreadsheet using the module XLRD. And in the last lecture, lecture 17, we spoke about how to uh, take that data and kind of manipulate it both in long-term and short-term memory in Python so that you could perform uh, targeted searches. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can take the data from one Excel spreadsheet, have it interact with the data in another Excel spreadsheet, both in both cases using XLRD, and then uh, populate the results that we wanna see in a new Excel spreadsheet. And the way in which we're going to do that is with a new module or library called XLSX Writer. Tried to say that 10 times fast. I know I can. And the way in which we're going to do this is very simple and it's very intuitive. And if you've gotten a good grasp on XLRD, you should have no problem with XLSX Writer. What this is going to allow you to do is essentially create new um, a new Excel file uh, and if it already exists, overwrite it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete uh, this Excel uh, file right now so you can see it kind of populate. If you noticed over here, I've deleted it. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to import basically XLRD, import RE, regex, and import XLSX writer. And what I want you to do is what I want you to do is to create two different book objects. We're going to call them book and sheet, or sorry, book and book two. And then we're going to create the sheets respective to those uh, book objects. So sheet and sheet two. So what are these two different Excel spreadsheets? Well, book is going to be the same one that we've been working with in the past uh, video or so. And that's going to be our Frankish Kings. And our uh, second one is going to be uh, 18 underscore sample searches. And all this is, is this is very simple stuff. I've just created a list of search words that I want to run across our description tag in our sample file. So if you remember in the last video, we had uh, each row broken down. We're going to do that again. And we had this description uh, object created for each iteration. And that description had a long string that kind of was the first paragraph on Wikipedia. What I want to do in this video is I want to perform a targeted search again, but I want to have it perform multiple searches across all of that data. And what I want it to do is to then create a new Excel spreadsheet that'll provide me with the name, the birth, the death, and then the, uh, the results of my search. So for each time, uh, let's say a description describes a king or an emperor, it'll return the results in a new Excel spreadsheet. And the way in which we're going to do that is we're going to create two new objects. We're going to create workbook, which is going to be uh, xlsxwriter.workbook, capital W, very important. And we're going to have the name of the file that we want to see. I am just using simple results.xlsx. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a sheet object. So we're going to use worksheet, and that's going to be equal to workbook.add underscore worksheet. And what that's going to do is it's going to create an Excel uh, workbook. And then what it's going to do is it's going to actually create a sheet in that workbook. This is going to create the file, but the file won't be populated until the Python script completes and we close it. This is very important. If you do not have this workbook.close and uh, the, use the close function with parentheses, your file will not save. I can prove this to you right now. I will run the script without it and no file exists. That's because we did not close or save the workbook. And so while we created it in memory, we never saved it, so the file never existed. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do is going to do the exact same thing we did last time. We're going to have a for loop that's going to go through and it's just going to split the uh, the initial book, the initial, initial one that has our kings and descriptions and births and deaths. And we're gonna separate all that data out by uh, row in each iteration. And then within each row, we're going to separate it into different objects. That's going to allow us to actually have the information that we want to see. So we're going to keep all that the exact same. This is where this gets a little bit different. 
I have created an internal object, it's called internal, and what it's going to be is a list. And what we are going to do is we're going to have a for loop nested within this for loop. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a for loop for p in the range of 1. Uh, we can change that to 0. Uh, and we're going to do that across sheet 2 dot n rows. And what that's going to do is it's going to iterate across this um, this Excel file. So we're going to open up that Excel file and iterate across that. And all of our searches are just in the first column. So all we need to do is grab our, make a search object and set it to the uh, column zero, uh, sorry, uh, position zero in that row, which is going to give us that A column value. And then what we're going to do is we are going to perform a targeted search across uh, this initial for loop row. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new object, matches two, which is going to create a list within this P for loop. And it's going to regex find all search. And so it's going to search the, um, the uh, search the thing that we want to search for. And then it's going to search specifically the description, which is going to be this object up here, the column. And then it's going to, we're going to use this, re dot in all caps ignore case. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to perform a regex search without uh, it being case sensitive. So if the word uh, king is capital or lowercase, it won't matter. It will, it will return all results. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a conditional statement. And this conditional statement is going to say that if the length of matches two is greater than zero, so if it returned a result, then what we are going to do is we are going to internal dot append. So we're going to append this list with the matches to uh, zero. And that's going to be essentially the first result. So we don't care if the word king appears multiple times throughout um, throughout our list. We could, and we could change this uh, to iterate across all, all indications of king. But what, what we just care about is if the word appears at all in that description tag. And so what we're going to do is we're going to store that data, all the hits, all the results, uh, in internal, and it's going to iterate through each of these, uh, each of these rows. So it's going to let me pull it up right here, so you can kind of see. It's going to search for Pope, and then it's going to search for King, then Monastery, Church, France, Germany, Emperor, Burgundy, and Power. It's going to search all those words, and any time it finds one, it's going to save the res save the fact that it found it in internal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to print off internal just to kind of troubleshoot and make sure that it's searching things correctly. And this is where this really uh, important bit comes in. This is where we're going to actually be working with XLSX Writer. And this is going to be where we start writing to our Excel file. So what we're going to say is worksheet, going up to this object here, dot write, we're going to use the write function, and we're going to say in row i, so it's going to call, go back to this I up here. In row I, so in the first instance, it's going to be 0. In column 0, so uh, if you're working in Excel, this is going to be A1. We want to, or actually A2, because we're going to iterate uh, down. Doesn't matter. Uh, I'll do this just so you can kind of see it. I don't worry about it. Uh, where we want to put the name into that position. So we want to create a new Excel spreadsheet. And in A2, we're going to say name. And that's going to put that object in that specific cell. And we're going to do the same thing for birth and death. But next to all that data, I want to see all the re results returned. So I can quickly go through and just kind of see where these keywords are, are, are appearing in these descriptions. And so what I wanted to do is I want to say if the length of internal is greater than one, so if we have uh, more than one re uh, result, then what I want it to do is I want it to um, go through and iterate across these. And what I want it to do is say for, uh, for each item in the range of the length of internal, go through and write in that row 3 plus L. That's an L, to be clear and write down that result. So what this is going to do is it's going to run a loop, a write loop. And by doing it plus L, it's going to be plus zero on the first iteration, then plus one, then plus two, and then plus three, etc. 
And so what it's going to allow us to do is to actually populate uh, all of these results. So that's what's happening here. And what that's going to do is it's going to write in our Excel spreadsheet a series of results across the row. So we can kind of organize our data for whatever reason you might want to organize it this way uh, by keyword to allow you to actually quickly just kind of see where these keywords appear in Excel. So let me go ahead and just run this and we're going to see our results cre be created over here. Right there you see it. And that was real time by the way. So I'm going to come over here and actually open up results. And you see exactly what we wanted to see. We see Theodoric, his birth date, his death, and then we see the keywords that were in that description, King and Burgundy. King and Burgundy here, King, Burgundy, and Power here. We don't see any of our keywords associated with Childebert or Theodoric or Carloman, but we see them all kind of, we see different ones appear for these individuals. This allows me to kind of see very quickly uh, what keywords are appearing in a specific Excel um, Excel cell <laughs> in each row. Now, while this might not seem that significant, the principle, the concept behind it is what is significant. Uh, to do this kind of a search in Excel would be uh, quite expensive and difficult to do. And using Python, we're able to make two different Excel spreadsheets communicate with one another and then populate the results in some significant way in a new Excel spreadsheet. I don't know of a way to do this very easily in Excel, but it's quite easy to do once you have a basic understanding of Python. And this is something that I have personally actually used in a DH project. So you should at least have the basics here to understand how to actually create a new Excel spreadsheet. That was the chief goal of this video, was to show you how to kind of create one. And if you wanna just look at the basics, just how to create it, all you're going to need to do is simply, uh, you're really only going to simply need these commands here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, actually before I do that I should do one other thing. I wanted to explain to you why, um, why all of our results were populated on the second row in Excel. And that's because we started off I at 1 in this main for loop. If we wanted to have everything kind of populate on that first um, on that first row the first time around, what we would need to do is we would simply need to do this, uh, which is going to uh, basically take all that information and put it uh, put it where we want to see it. And if I run it, this is important, when you rerun um, a code XLSX write, it's going to erase everything you had in the Excel spreadsheet before. And so now you see all the previous data is replaced, replaced with the same data, but we see it all bumped up to the first row. So if you want to see that, you don't want to go back and delete a row, that's a real simple way to uh, to fix that. Just add in that minus one, which is going to put it at row uh, zero in Excel. But before we leave this video, I want to explain to you that you don't need any of this stuff. If for whatever reason, all you want to do is simply write one thing to Excel, all you need to know how to do is to say that you want to put it in cell 0, 0, that's going to put it in A1, and you want to put this string. Save, and you simply run it, and when we open up the results, you will see that it has done just that. This string is in A1. That's all you really need to know uh, to actually create and write to an Excel spreadsheet from Python. Um, it's important to understand that this is going to strictly work in XLSX, but you should be uh, writing to XLSX format anyway. This is the new standard with Excel data. This other information I provided throughout this video just kind of gives you a sense for the actual power behind uh, working with Excel within Python. You can do much more, much more efficiently, much more quickly, and much more comprehensively by interacting with Excel and Python using XLRD and XLSX Writer. Hopefully, uh, if you go back and rewatch this video a couple of times, you'll get more and more comfortable with this and be able to see what's actually happening in these for loops. I recommend taking this code and playing with it. Try to replicate it. 
uh, experiment with it, change things around, and uh, make mistakes. Make make mistakes. That is the best way to learn when it comes to programming, is just to experiment, make mistakes, and then troubleshoot the problem. That's how I learn most of uh, most of the things I know in Python, is by just making mistake after mistake after mistake. And eventually, you stop making the simple mistakes, and uh, you actually learn more by troubleshooting on your own or finding the solutions online. But that's how you can kind of work with Excel and Python. In the next videos, we're going to start stepping away from working with Excel and start talking about one of the more necessary parts of uh, any DH project. And that's going to be interacting with data that is available online. And that's going to be known as web scrapping. And we're going to be doing that in the next three videos. So thank you for listening.